been a while since I've done any sort of recording, and honestly, it has been uh, difficult to get anything painted lately. Um, but for today, I'm going to be painting some jackal hounds. Um, you know, in my last video, I talked about wanting to get a 3D printer and how I've been enjoying OPR's Grim Dark Future and Age of Fantasy. So I went out and bought a 3D printer. It is FDM, a Neptune Elegoo 3 Pro, and I bought it mostly because I don't have room for a resin printer. Um, and also I don't like the whole issue of toxic fumes and um, toxic materials uh, to make the figures and also the fragility of the figures in general. Uh, so I went for the FDM with, um, I'm printing with PLA and it's pretty sturdy um, and all of these hounds are they all look kind of a bit different there are a couple different experiments I did with how to print them so a few of them are <coughs> printed unbased and um, from the feet up to the top of their of their back um, vertically and then there are some where I went into blender and um, fused the bases to the models and printed them from the side up because um, trying to print from the base up ran into a few issues on some of the models. <clears throat> the supports connecting the base to other sections of the models were very weak and broke a lot, causing print fails. So, and uh, on the ones that were printed on their side pre-based, uh, you can see there's some warped scarring uh, from where the supports set up. Um, on one side of the base, so uh, I'm back to printing them unbased, and I put the base next to the model. Um, but in general, they print really well. I'm really excited about how um, how easily they are able to come out, um, and the level of detail they have for being FDM. So uh, for these, I'm doing a very simple paint scheme of their skin being uh, chaotic red, uh, doing necrotic flesh for the um, carapissy shells they have on their back and on their face, um, as well as their claws, and then touching up leather brown because they have some stuff strapped to them, um, some plate mail metal for uh, their collars and I guess a little hydration device that's stuck to their side. And doing crystal blue for the mouth um, and mummy robes for some of the leg wraps they have. And then um, going over everything with a mid brown to give it kind of a dusty muddy look. And then doing some highlights with skeleton bone and um, void shield blue on a couple areas.
But for one of these, instead of using necrotic flesh for the carapace, I'm using desert yellow. And I only did it with one just to see the effect of how it looked. And that's something I really like about 3D printing is that um, every time I bought a model kit, it was, you know, $30 to $100 for the models. So every model I built, I wanted to, I wanted them to come out looking good. And so um, for a while it took, it takes a while for me to paint them because I kind of agonize on how I want them to look in the end. Um, the Night Haunt were a bit easier because I knew I just wanted them to look spooky, but for some of the other models I have, they just, they're still kind of just sitting, um, in my quote-unquote pile of shame, uh, because I just can't think. I could never think about what I wanted to do with them. So, but 3D printing, it's like, you know, I have a paint scheme that I don't like instead of trying to scrub it all off and redo it. Um, that's just, you know, it's still a viable model. It's just... I can print a brand new one for maybe like 20 cents because um, giant two kilogram or kilogram filament um, is only about 15 bucks so and from that I can get dozens of armies <laughs> dozens of models not dozens of armies
I will say one big thing that I tell everybody about 3D printing is do not get a 3D printer if you don't like learning and projects and trial and error because it, no matter what type of printer you get, um, you're going to have dozens of failed prints. You're going to fail a lot and have to readjust settings and sometimes even when the settings are right, for whatever reason, um, the print fails anyway. And if you reprint it, it'll print fine the second time. Um, so if you're someone who gets easily frustrated by things not coming out correctly or not coming out perfect, um, I wouldn't recommend getting a 3D printer because even the models that I have finished, um, there's like a couple things here and there where a support broke or um, it warped in some way. So parts of the model, like, you know, some models are missing their legs or their hands or a hand is like shifted in a weird way um, or the leg has shifted or broke off halfway and um, is missing a chunk so it's hard to glue back in. So for those moments, I just milliput something together for them and do a little fixing there. And that's part of the trial and error is you start to recognize what sections um, whenever you're in your slicer software, what sections are going to be too weak to sit there and need extra supports. Um, so you just draw in a couple extra supports. Um, I'm using Prusa Slicer. It works the best for me. Um, it's detailed enough where I can get a lot of manipulation in how the software slices, um, but not too overly complicated. Uh, I tried to move to Orca Slicer because it expands your options a bit. Um, but for whatever reason, it made my printer run really weird. So I stopped using it and switched back to Prusa Slicer. Uh, I didn't like the Elegoo packaged in software because I think it's a variation on Cura and it's just so options light. It's kind of hard to troubleshoot why something is failing. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoy my 3D printer a lot. I think the Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro um, is a good, perfect introductory printer. It was only like $200, and it comes with everything. Um, I'm thinking about upgrading to the Neptune 4 Plus because uh, it has a bigger build plate area, and uh, the Neptune 4 has a lot more customizable options. Um, like I said, the 3 Pro is very beginner-friendly, so... It, a lot of the stuff is just automatic. I think the only manual thing you need to set up is the Z offset. Um, whereas the the Plus has a lot more um, manual settings of the bed and, and other things. Because my print bed is a little uneven on the 3 Pro. Um, so as much as I auto level that thing uh, in the upper left quadrant... Um, you can see that, you know, stuff just isn't sticking to the build plate as well. And then the back right quadrant, um, it's sticking a bit too well. So there's a bit of an offset there. But other than that, it's, it's been a lot of fun, um, getting these STLs and going into Blender and modifying them, um, and working on getting them printed and now finally getting around to start painting the STLs. Um, they paint really well. They paint very similar to a lot of the other plastic models that I've painted. Um, even like the little layer lines, which are very subtle, you can't really see them, especially after being painted. Um, there's like tricks and stuff you can do with them. I think it's like uh, acetone fumes can melts PLA to the point where it kind of smooths it out, um, but I just didn't want to fuss with it because that's another caustic chemical that I have to have. So I'm just sticking with what I've got, and I I like them a lot. I think they turn out really well uh, with the paint scheme I have in mind. So for the lists I'm doing, a lot of them I'm using 20 hounds, so this is actually the second time I'm painting them, so it goes a bit quicker. It only took me about two and a half hours to paint all five of these. Um, and for the other ones, um, the jackals are, for everybody that doesn't know, the jackals are a very like hybrid army, because um, they have a lot of good stuff that lets them move around the battlefield. They get to ignore difficult terrain 
Um, they get bonuses to fight in melee, but they also have a lot of ranged weapons. Um, and some bigger cavalry type creatures. Um, not a ton of variety for them though. They're they're very they're very small as far as their unit selection goes, but every unit they do have it's pretty viable on the tabletop I would say. And much like every army in one page rolls, um, there's not technically like an optimal meta way to build it. I'm sure there is if you really really crunch the numbers on it, but you can build an army so many several different ways and still have it be viable and have it adhere to a certain uh, strategy that you want to do rather than trying to build to a optimal meta um, which I love that I like that there's so many different options available So from here, I am actually starting to play with the idea of running just like a narrative uh, campaign um, using my orc models that I have, the jackals that I have printed out, and then I'm probably going to be printing out some high elf fleets uh, because I joined their Patreon, which um, yeah, the 3D printer is a really good way to get models and stuff because um, they give you a ton of stuff for only $10 a month. and. Um, High Elf Fleets was this month. I think they're coming out with their jet bikes as the last part of the High Elf Fleets um, line that they're they're designing. So I think I'll start printing High Elf Fleets and use those three models to those three uh, factions to start kind of a narrative campaign where I don't know. I'm gonna just be writing little story segments and then running a battle. Um, just on my own, just because I don't have time to get to a game shop and play with other people. Um, I play online on tabletop sim when I have a chance, but uh, playing physically I, I just don't have uh, the opportunity, but um, yeah, I'm going to be running little battles like either in Firefight or in, you know, the full uh, bigger scale battles, um, depending on where the narrative is going and then uh, whatever happens in the fight will affect, of course, how I write the next section uh, for the in-between, and um, I'm wanting to I'm wanting to buy some more STLs to kind of fill out the different factions, um, as well as design my own, um, my own factions, 
because uh, the, the Patreon gives you access to their army builder where you can kind of custom make your own army. So I made some Age of Fantasy army where it's like a frog tribe. Um, which I know there's frogs in <coughs> the Saurians, but um, the frog tribe I have in mind, they're kind of like a, an offset of the Saurians and they, they uh, came about in a completely different way to them. So... Um, I'm having I'm having fun. There's not like a lot of frog specific stuff. Like yeah, they have frog mages, but most of their people are are um, other types of reptiles instead of the amphibians. Whereas the list I'm building, it's going to be mostly mostly frogs. Um, I think I have some like crocodile units in there for some one reason or another. But yeah, so that's been a lot of fun doing 3D modeling in Blender.
so uh, this is how everybody turned out i really like them i actually kind of really like how the desert yellow came out um, that very orangey look so the next towns i paint i'll probably paint a few more of them like that um just to give a bit of variation between each of the models um but i like the red skin i like the blue tongues there are a couple cavalry units and i am debating whether to just do red skin and the carapace colors as well or if i should be doing more of like a greenish grayish flesh color for them but uh, i'll figure that out when i get to them um, for right now i'm going to be finishing the hounds and finishing a couple of firefight squads that i have built uh, for that narrative campaign but um until next time thanks everyone